Hi, I'm Eric. And I'm Christopher. And we're Grow For Me 5B. Welcome to our garden. Today, we're going to take you on a tour of our new garden. So let's take a walk into our back garden. To the right is our east border, which we showed you in our last garden tour. But when you go to the left, past this beautiful hedge of sublime hydrangeas, you'll come across our new garden space that was finished last summer. Let's take a closer look. The first thing you're going to notice are these beautiful hollyhocks. These are double majorette champagne. We started them from seed, from um, Baker Creek seeds. And right next to them, of course, is the Verbena bonariensis which is a huge highlight of our garden. It's airy, it's tall, it's beautiful, and the pollinators love it. On our Instagram, a lot of people ask if the Verbena venariensis reseeds itself around the garden, and it, it does, for sure. Uh, but the seedlings are pretty easy to pull. And honestly, they are beautiful. So when they come back as volunteers, we do appreciate it. Right next to the Verbena and the hollyhocks is an evergreen specimen that I have wanted for years. It is a weeping white spruce. We did look for this for years for him. And uh, it's just beautiful. It's gonna stay very slender, but it's gonna get very tall. And when you come through those garden, that garden arch, it's just gonna be this beautiful, beautiful thing to lay to look at. <laughs> All right, so let's walk around a little bit and look at these Tottering by Gently Roses from David Austin Roses. It's a single bloom, so there's only five petals. I think there's a beautiful one just opening right here. That buttery yellow color, it's wonderful. It's so pretty. I knew when I first saw these on their website that these were a type of rose I wanted. Um, I'm going to back it out just a little bit so we can talk about how we mirrored a little bit of the design on the entrance to the patio. These Wygelas, which are... Midnight Wine Shine. Midnight Wine Shine. I think in our last video I called them something incorrect, but... They're Midnight Wine Shine, both kind of, they were having that mirror image flanking each other, which gives it a tiny touch of formality. But then we have this beautiful fullness beyond it. These are Jazzberry Supertunia Vistas, which are um, just beautiful. Great vivid color. You know, we love our cat mint, so we have our Walker's Low. This was cut back a few weeks ago and it's already reflushing. Behind that is the Midnight Masquerade Penstemon, which bloomed beautifully and did get its seasonal cut back as well. Now, something that we wanted to add to this bed, especially because it's so young, is structure. And one of those structural elements is this trellis. This is the Square Essex Obelisk from Gardener's Supply. And growing on it, we have a Sensation Honeysuckle from Proven Winners. It had its first flush, so it's heading into its second flush, but it is a beautifully scented, highly fragrant, lovely honeysuckle. Um, and this is it's another not. one of our big anchors to the garden. This is a green gable black gum tree. They, um, they have the most beautiful fall color, and it's... Uh, it's it's also a native here, yeah. And one of the reasons we chose it is because of the fall color. We have this repetition of boxwoods throughout this space to give us that winter structure, that winter interest. These are sprinter boxwoods from Proven Winners Color Choice Shrubs. And moving around to this side, these are three Steady Eddy Viburnums. And Christopher, you were listening to uh, the Gardening Simplified podcast with Cece Arvella. And what did she say about this uh, Viburnum? It is basically in bloom consistently. It never stops blooming. That's where the Steady Eddy comes from. I highly suggest listening to that Gardening Simplified podcast. They do a plants on trial section, and this was one of them. And you just learn the greatest details about these plants, and you appreciate them so much more. In front of that is a teeny tiny tater tot arborvitae, which um, we actually got at a Proven Winners retreat back in November in a little court size. I threw it in my carry-on on the plane, put it outside until the winter, planted it up in the spring, and it's... I think it's doing pretty well for... It is. It's alive. <laughs> yeah, it's alive. <laughs> we have some brand new shrubs here. These are a favorite of the rabbits, which is why the bottom half of them are a little sparse. 
but this is a type of aronia. I want to say it's some sort of fire. Is it snow fire? Snow fire aronia. Um, and they will get berries eventually after they bloom. And planted in front of those are midnight sun wygelas. Beautiful. I know. The color on these, incredible. And then the color combo with the bluish foliage. The other reason I loved these aronias here is because their foliage is so bold. It's so different than the other foliage, and it bounces really nicely off the Midnight Masquerade foliage. Moving to the right, we have another layer of plantings. In front, we have a drift of reminiscent pink roses. Now, we're going to try and find you a beautiful example that isn't covered in Japanese beetles because you know it's Japanese beetle season in our garden. But this is a reminiscent pink rose. They smell delicious. Um, and they should be eventually getting this tall. See, this one is sending out a nice tall shoot. But Back we had, feet. yeah, we had a super late frost uh, this year, which set some of the plants back. But behind the reminiscent pink roses are three quick fire fab hydrangeas. Which just again, yeah, they're just starting to bloom. These were planted, everything here was planted very small last year. So I think those are doing extremely well for having only been a one gallon last year. Here's our hedge of Walker's Little Catmint. Another obelisk, because we wanted to repeat this structure. And planted on this obelisk is a still water clematis. In front of that, is is an ancient mariner rose grouping this is a david austin rose it's beautifully pink on instagram i think <clears throat> it's one of the roses we post the, the most it blooms prolifically it's resting right now it's got a pretty hard cut back and it's uh its second flush is going to be just as good i'm sure right in front of that we have a fantastic hedge this is the rockin deep purple salvia it's an annual it never loses its color. The hummingbirds love it. We have this planted with a little blonde ambition grass that has the really fun seed heads. Behind that is some rock and blue, not blue suede shoes. Is it? Uh, play in the blues. Play in the blues. Yeah. And we have a lot of annuals in this bed because this bed is so young. And as, as time goes on and we develop, you know, we get more plants and develop, we'll replace the annuals with perennials and shrubs. We have an idea for this spot for the fall and it involves hydrangeas and it involves being inspired by some gardens we saw in Michigan. So that's super exciting. Yeah. Now this planting may be a little close, but we have a bloomering purple lilac right next to that sublime hydrangea. So we will see how these two do together. That bloomering purple is supposed to get pretty large as is this sublime, but you know, sometimes when your garden's young, you don't have enough patience and you you plant things a little too close. But we're going to try to avoid that. So this half of the new garden has a little bit of vegetable growth happening in it, as well as ornamentals. We're starting in the front corner here with a brand new hydrangea from Proven Winners Color Choice Shrubs. And this is called Tiny Quick Fire. It's a panicle hydrangea, blooms on new wood. And it is supposed to be the smallest uh, hydrangea paniculata on the market. And here's a bloom that's already started. Right behind that in this Jardin birdcage uh, trellis or obelisk, what would you call it? I would probably call it a trellis. All right, we have the, the Stand By Me Lavender Clematis, which is young, so it's a little floppy. We, uh, we're enjoying the blooms they're really beautiful and then they get these really cool fuzzy seed heads right before new blooms come so this has been a really <clears throat> fun color addition and as the plants bulk up it'll be a little bit more solid and a little less floppy this is another specimen evergreen that i really wanted and i really i saw it at where were we i think we were at pleasant view in new hampshire we were touring their trial garden and I saw a larger specimen of this, and I thought, that needs to be in our garden one day. And here it is. It's a Japanese white pine. It's got beautiful bluish foliage. And these really cute cones. <clears throat> Below that, we have a trio of double play artisan spirea. We've been 
experimenting in the garden with a couple different spireas. They all have these different personalities. This one gets that really cool red new growth and then pretty pink blooms. You can see the pink has kind of gone out of some of them. There you go. We have some surefire white begonias in the ground. We had a little spot to fill and those did a very nice job. And right behind that is a shad blow. Oh, that's right, a shad blow. I always want to call it a Juneberry tree. But I guess they're both right. Yeah. Oh, look, our garden visitors are here. Ooh. The Japanese beetles. Uh, we have some bronze fennel all throughout this space. I just love the texture that the bronze fennel brings to the garden. Here is a sting arborvitae. Look at this cute little thing. It's going to stay very narrow, but eventually it's going to get pretty darn tall, and it's going to give us that nice vertical interest in this space. Down some... on the ground, we have some lemon jade sedum, which have been visited by some animal friends, um, and some walkers low catmint. Behind that, we have the sugar shack button bush. I think this is such a cool plant. Do we have any blooms popping There's out? no blooms, but there are buds happening. But this will bloom white, poofy little flowers, and they'll eventually fade out to red. <clears throat> Heirloom Roses sent us this beautiful Earth Angel Rose, and they, they send out amazing specimens. I mean, it truly had great roots, beautiful growth habit. Can't wait till it gets bigger. We'll get to see the blooms. Again, the repeated sprinter boxwoods. And don't forget this prairie fire crab apple above us as well oh, as yeah. other big structural plantings. Under that, we have some delphiniums, more bronze fennel. These are our sesky gold uh, birch leaf spirea. They look a little sparse this year. I'm not quite sure what's happening with them, but we wanted this pop of bright gold. Below that, you can see some mini Vista indigo, super tunias filling in the ground. And tucked in behind is a raspberry cream gomfrina, which is currently being lit by the sun as it comes up. It looks fantastic. Um, this was something we did from seed. We actually had about a hundred of them ready to go on the ground and that late frost and the bunnies have taken us down to about 15, which is why you might notice some of them are under uh, wire cloches. This is, is this the landscape shrub of the year for Proven Winners? It certainly is. It's the purple pillar rose of Sharon. It's looking fantastic. It is. I can't wait to see it start to bloom. I don't think it didn't bloom last year because we had purchased it so late in the season. We have some iris down here. More of those gomfrinas. A drift of Supertunia mini vista pink. This here, I'm going to try and go to the other side so it's not so backlit. But this here is another cool specimen. It's a Diana contorted larch. But check this out. This structure is so cool. It's deciduous, so it's going to drop these uh, needles over the winter. But that's really fun. Underneath the Diana contorted larch is a trio of little lime punch hydrangeas. Some more catmint. Verbena banariensis again on the edge here. Very heavy gold. Some zinnias. And let's head down this way to another trellis with a clematis. Christopher, what clematis is this? This one is pink mink. Pink mink. We just planted this a couple weeks ago. A snowberry bush. And finally, our corn. And we've got tassels. Got tassels. Thank you for joining us on a garden tour of our new garden. I'm Eric. And I'm Christopher. And we're Grow For Me 5B. Thanks for growing with us. Have a great day.